Hi everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode in my children's book reading series. Um, today we are going to be reading a book about Maya Angelou. Um, so her story in the Little People, Big Dreams series. So, um, I want to remind you that for copyright reasons, I will not be reading the full book in this public video. Um, I will continue the reading where it leaves off at the end of this video in an unlisted video linked below in the description box. So if you want to listen to the full book continuously, I recommend that you line the two videos up in your watch later or in a playlist or something so that you can keep them playing one after another. Um, of course, if you like the book, if you like the story, if you like Maya Angelou, I do recommend that you buy the book for yourself. So this one, again, is in the Little People Big Dreams series um, about Maya Angelou. It's written by Lisbeth Kaiser and illustrated by Lera Salaberia. So, there are other books in this Little People Big Dream series. Um, there's one about Frida Kahlo and Amelia Earhart. Earhart. Um, so, I was trying to find out if there's a connection between this series and this other book that I will be using called Little Leaders, Bold Women Throughout History, or, or something it's called. But I couldn't immediately see a link, but the, the, the font was so similar, so I am still, I'm not sure. Okay, a little introduction. Um, First of all, if in this beginning of the video you hear some slight background sound, aside from my usual white noise, um, if there is a person if there is a person in the air right now, <laughs> circling near my house. Um, I don't know what it's called. He has a little, or they have a little sh parachute -y thing. Um, and it has an engine, so it has a, a seat. He's hanging, they're hanging from a seat, of sorts, and it has a little engine. And they're just flying about up in the sky. And I can hear them. It's very faint, but I can hear them. So maybe you can pick up on it too. 
so hopefully that's not too troubling, but it will be dark in just a little bit, so I don't think they're gonna be up there for much longer. Now, um, my Angelou, so I actually forgot to ask my sisters which one of them bought the book and why uh, in preparation of the video, but I am quite certain uh, my oldest sister would have gotten it for my niece because she She loves poetry and she very much loves my Angelou a lot So I'm pretty sure that she bought this for our niece um, So that's kind of all the backstory I have. On the back of the book, it reads, Discover the lives of outstanding people, from designers and artists to scientists. All of them achieved incredible things, yet each began life as a child with a dream. Maya Angelou spent much of her childhood in Stamps, Arkansas. After a traumatic event at age eight, she stopped speaking for five years. However, Maya rediscovered her voice through wonderful books and went on to become one of the world's most beloved writers and speakers. This inspiring story of her life features a facts and photos section at the back. So, the book is a children's book with um, children's illustrations and very short short paragraphs of text, but as was just said at the back of the book, there is this um, little timeline with a couple pictures and just a brief summary of her life in a more um, in in writing more aimed at adults. So yeah, let's read that first before we continue with the actual children's book. So, she was born in 1928. Maya Angelou is one of the most memorable voices in American culture. Born Marguerite Annie Johnson in St. Louis, Missouri, she spent much of her childhood in a small town in the South. There, she faced a lot of unfairness because of her skin color. When she was eight, she was attacked by her mother's boyfriend, and she stopped speaking for five years. In that time, she grew to love books and found power and strength in words. Maya overcame her childhood struggles and went on to lead a marvelous life. 
she became a dancer, singer, actress, writer, director, journalist, playwright, producer, teacher, and an activist for civil rights. She performed in nightclubs and began calling herself Maya Angelou. She also became a mother and a grandmother. In 1969, Maya turned the memories from her childhood into a book called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. The book became famous and sold millions of copies around the world. Maya wrote many more books, won many awards, and read her poems at the White House and the United Nations. People everywhere continue to be inspired by her incredible life, her beautiful words, and her powerful, hopeful voice. And she died in 2014. So that is like a brief summary. Now, I remember reading this book once. I read it to my niece. Well, I translated it to my niece once. So um, that's a little while ago. So but it's a sad story, but it's very beautifully done. And I don't think children should be shielded from sad stories. So, um, okay, let's find a suitable position to read this in and have you be able to see some of the artwork as well. Okay, here we are, I think. It's not. A straight view, but I need to be able to read it as well. So. Okay, remember that this part of the video is just going to fade to black at one point and it will be continued in an unlisted video. Marguerite was born in the city of St. Louis. Her brother called her Maya. When Maya was four, she and her brother were sent to live with their grandmother in Stamps, Arkansas. Growing up in the South, Maya was treated unfairly because of the color of her skin and because she was a girl. The world outside was very cruel. Home was hard too. When Maya was eight, her mother's boyfriend attacked her. Maya was so upset, she stopped talking. A friend of her grandmother's, named Mrs. Flowers, noticed that Maya was afraid to use her voice. Mrs. Flowers showed Maya all kinds of wonderful books and how the words come alive when you read them out loud.
Maya found her voice again in the stories and poems of great writers. She loved words so much she read every book in the library. Even though Maya was a great student, she was told that she couldn't get a good job because of the color of her skin. But she had pride and hope. She thought, there's nothing I can't be. <laughs> 